Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Tonight's lecture uh, is titled Reboot. You know, today we all use uh, computers, cell phones, HD televisions, and it's happened to every one of, one of us that uh, if something goes haywire, your computer's not working, uh, your, your phone doesn't work properly, you get to lose your picture on your TV. When all else fails, what we do is reboot. We shut it off, and then when we turn it back on, miracle of miracles, <laughs> somehow everything's okay, which is very good but very strange. But it's really a great lesson in life, this concept of rebooting. And it really falls right in with a religious uh, lifestyle living in this world. I think in reality, the greatest programmer in the world is God Almighty himself. We never really noticed it before because computers weren't as prevalent, they didn't have any exist, as we are today. And really everything in the world is part of a computer program. And the only thing that can break that program is man. And we have that ability. We have the ability to reboot. Nothing else does. Everything else just follows the program and very well, whether it's something that the item or the individual, the thing wants it or not, that's what it was programmed to do. That's what it does. You know, they, um, they tell a story about a young man who went to a rabbi and was questioning why he had to pray the same prayers every day. Repetitious. Seemed to be redundant. Why, why do that? Why bother? The rabbi was looking out the window and he said to the young man, let's go outside. Moshe, the water carrier, was coming down the street. The young man followed the rabbi and the rabbi went up to Moshe, the water car car carrier, and he, Moshe didn't look real happy. Had a frown on his face and he gave him a shalom aleichem, Moshe, how you doing? And he kind of grunted. And uh, he said, how's, how's life? He says, life is tough. You know, the water buckets are heavy. My back's killing me. The children are mischievous, and they uh, try to knock over the buckets. Uh, I really don't make, you know, a whole lot of money. Uh, life is tough. Life is tough. And with that, he said, you know, he had customers to take care of, and he went on his way. And the young man turned to the rabbi and <clears throat> to shrug, well, what was that about? He says, come back tomorrow. Same time. So the next day, <clears throat> the young man comes back. Again, the rabbi's looking out the window. And the young man asked the rabbi again, how are you answering my question? <clears throat> he said, there's Moshe, the water carrier. Let's go say hello to him. And the two of them went outside. And somehow today, Moshe was, had a smile on his face. And the rabbi gave him Shalom Aleichem, and he said, uh, Moshe, how are you feeling? He said, life is good. And uh, he said, I have uh, my health. I have a strong back. The rabbi said, what about the children? What about the little children? And he said, children. You know, children are children. You know, I buy them off with a little bit of candy. And uh, everything's fine. God bless them. And, uh, you know, I don't make a lot of money, but I make enough money to support my family. And one thing, people always need water. And with a smile, he said, I'm sorry, I have to go take care of my customers. And the rabbi turned to the young man and he said, this is why we pray every day, because every day is different. And even though it seems to be the same, this, young, this Moshe of the water carrier was doing exactly what he did yesterday. Two different perspectives on what he was doing, two different perspectives on life. In a sense, what Moshe did is he rebooted that that which bothered him the day before all of a sudden didn't bother him the next day. The, in life, we all try, I think, to be as happy as we can, and especially if you follow the advice of the Torah, this instruction manual that we follow. But still, there are times that we're tired, and times we get angry, disappointed, frustrated. Time we see the glass is half empty. 
And as much as we try all different types of things in ways to change that, sometimes it's just very difficult to be able to do so, to be able to get out of a, a funk that you're in. And you know better. And you know you should. But somehow, it's just not working. You, t you know, you keep talking to yourself as if you're asleep. You just don't hear it. And in the end, if nothing else seems to work, rebooting does. And this, I think, why God put into our lives this concept of sleep. That we have to go to sleep. Whether we want to or not, we are forced to go to sleep. Because when you wake up, it's a new day. And no matter what yesterday was, all of a sudden, that computer's working, that phone is working, that television is working. And the fact that it didn't work before is history. It just doesn't make a difference anymore. And this is really the blessing of the, the idea of having another day. And also the idea of Shab the Shabbat in Yom Tov. That it forces us to let everything go. It forces us to shut everything down. To reboot our lives. To find a, a better direction. No matter what the direction was. And what if the direction was good? What if we don't need to reboot? Truth is, God challenges us. And he says, you did well yesterday. See if you can do it again today. And just like an athlete who tries to have a perfect game every time he plays, so too with us. So if things are really bad, or we perceive them to be, then we have the next day to try to be better. And if things are good, we can try to recreate it and get into that groove of not needing, so to speak, to reboot, just to continue, not to change up. When people become despondent, when people become disappointed, angry, they say things, they do things that they really don't mean. And it takes them over the edge. There is a verse in the Torah that says, the lo sekal cherish, that you should not curse a deaf person, which is an interesting command because he can't hear you. So why would the Torah tell us not to curse a deaf person? To tell not to curse someone makes sense. Why a deaf person? So basically the idea is that it, it puts you into a certain place, even though that person may not be able to hear it because he's deaf. But you become angry, you become changed. That bitterness is inside of you. And that's what anger generally does. It hurts you, not anyone else. In fact, the acronym for the word cherish, which is a deaf mute, stands for Chaim Rashli, my evil life. When a person becomes angry, when a person becomes despondent, what he does is he curses himself. Many people do this. And we believe that there's an angel that listens to these curses and takes them and makes a person pay. You know, we're called a madabra, one who speaks. We have a great amount of power in our lips. And those nonsensical things that we say, momentary lapses, the computer just broke down and we say something. My mother, may she rest in peace, all of a shalom, been dead some 30 years, but she was 54 when she passed away. And my mother would constantly say, I wish I was dead. And I would say to her, even when I wasn't religious, you shouldn't say that. But she did. And she passed away young. So a person needs to know that tomorrow's, tomorrow's better. Tomorrow will be much better. Don't look at the world as resting only on today. Reboot. Tomorrow's another day. And no matter where you are today, somehow, some way, there's this sun that comes up and a brightness in the air. And you just don't feel the same way. Even if you're totally frustrated, angry, the whole world's coming down around you. 
You know, the rabbis were very astute. The idea of a ksuba, a, um, a marriage contract, where a man gives a woman a certain amount of money if they get divorced. It's written in the ksuba. The rabbis, which is rabbinic, by the way, the rabbis did not allow a man to take an account, a bank account, and put, let's say, $100,000 in that bank account and tell his new bride, if we ever have a problem and we get divorced, that will be your money. It's sitting there waiting for you. You never have to worry about it. Rabbis wouldn't let a man do that. What the rabbi said is that your whole estate becomes collateralized to that marriage contract with great wisdom because if that money was set aside and a man could just in a moment of anger tell his wife to leave or she in a moment of anger thinks she wants to leave, that would end the marriage. But if they have a disagreement and they get very hot and things are said that maybe shouldn't be said and feelings are felt that are very deep and the hurt is there, his whole estate is collateralized to that ksuba. So that means he has to liquidate. It takes time. And in the meantime, it allows you to reboot. Cooler heads to prevail. And this really is the key. This idea that the Torah does not want you to make quick, hasty decisions. That what God wants us to do is to think about what we're doing. Don't curse yourself. Today may be a tough day. That's a challenge. I'm in the restaurant business and I always tell my managers, every day when you go home from work, put a black X or a red X on a calendar. Black X, great day. Red X, wish we could have skipped it. And then when you have a, a red X, X day when you go home and you're so frustrated and the truth is no matter how much money you make it's not enough it's just that frustrating flip through the calendar and you'll be amazed at the sea of black that you see because at that moment of red that's all you see is red and it seems like every day is this way and everything that happens is just like this and really it's not the case most of us Baruch Hashem live decent lives. And if we're not, it's not really God's problem, it's generally ours. We're doing something wrong. And if you're doing something wrong, change up on the program. You don't need to reboot, you need to change up what you're doing. But if you just get stuck in that rut, where you just, all the knowledge in the world, and, and you know the answers, but you just can't shake it. No, with certainty. That somehow, some way, the next day, will be better. And you won't feel quite as intense, quite as angry, quite as hurt as you did the day before. And especially when it's Shabbos and Yontav. What a gift. To just pull away from everything and to spend a day enjoying friends, family, and even yourself. You need to be someone that you enjoy, someone you like. And if you're not, reboot. Make yourself someone that you would need to be. You know, we all need to be salesmen, especially people that aren't married. And they go out on a date and they tell everybody how lousy they are. And then they wonder why nobody wants to marry them. You need to be someone that you can sell. Develop those traits that you want to have. Be what you need to be. Reboot. And I can promise you that if you look at yourself as you look at your phone and look at your computer and you look at your TV... Just when you see things are going in the wrong direction, reboot, change up. You do not have to keep following in that direction. God gave you the ability, what we call Bechira, free will, to change up no matter who we are. You don't have to be what you were. You can be what you need to be, what you like to be, what you want to be. May God help us all that we reboot and do it before it becomes a problem in our lives. Again, thank you very much for coming. And have a great Shabbos.